USA, religion and science are battling over the beginning of life. Half of the American population, some 120 million people, believe in biblical creation, that life, the universe, and everything in it was created by God in six days. They reject the word of science that humans evolved over millions of years from other species. Christians are fighting to have biblical creation taught in schools. Science is fighting to keep it out. At stake are the hearts, minds, and souls of America's youth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In Exodus chapter 20, it says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and all that in them is. Six days. It doesn't leave any room for anything else. It doesn't leave room for millions of years. According to the Bible, it was six days and six 24-hour days. This is the, the worldview known as biblical creationism. There's another worldview, though. And I like the way one writer equated it. He was an evolutionary writer, but he had the right picture. He said, the theory of evolution, it's like a universal acid. It permeates every aspect of our lives. It doesn't matter where you go, whether you go to the supermarket, or whether you go to the school, or whether you go to the library, or whether you go to the church. It's a hot topic, and it permeates everything. The, the teaching of evolution, when it's drawn out to its logical conclusions, uh, number one, it, it draws out that there is no God and the Christian says there is a God and we, we worship a God, Jesus Christ, who died and rose for our sins. And number two, it leaves us without any hope for the future because it takes away our origins from God and everything is only natural processes and there's nothing intrinsically metaphysical about the teachings of evolution. At the core of Christian belief is that God created life. He breathed into man the, the breath of life. Creation is the essence of who we are and our worldview. On the other hand, evolution strikes at that worldview, saying that creation was an accident. It simply happened. And of course, that attitude negates God. Many theories are spent on the origin of man. Some can trace some name to the family tree. But for me, I'm content with the blessed Bible plan. And you can't make a monkey out of me. Some believe that the earth started from a little spark. But they can't tell whence came the spark, you see. Many folks had no birth prior to old Noah's Ark. And you can't make a monkey out of me. Nor you can't make me out of a monkey. Nashville, Tennessee's capital city, is known as the home of country music and the Athens of the South. But it's the Old Testament rather than the Greek classics which is currently informing the state's legislature. The Christian lobby are supporting a bill in the Senate that makes it illegal to teach evolution as fact and threatens dismissal to those teachers who try to do so. The anti-evolution bill passed its first reading with only one vote against. Stirred by the determination of its supporters, politicians have been quick to embrace the spirit behind the bill. While we had this view that there was indeed a creator and he was behind things and man was ultimately accountable to him, there was a restraint upon our actions and we were a much more virtuous and civil society. As we've lost that, we've become uh, a more uh, violent country uh, with greater crime, greater teenage pregnancy. And it'll take some time, but reintroducing again that possibility that there is a creator will have its effects. Tell me, what's the biggest excuse for atheism the world has ever known? Care to make a guess? It's something that's continually proven false, but scientists still cling to it because it's the only way they can get rid of God.
Welcome to Truths That Transform, the daily radio outreach of Coral Ridge Ministries. Stay tuned for insights on changing the world for Jesus Christ. Preaching against evolution through its own radio and TV stations, the Christian Coalition has touched millions of the faithful, including politicians at state and national level. We do support the legislation wholeheartedly. The reason we support it is that we have legislators uh, for the first time in maybe two decades, willing to tackle religious issues, important moral issues. The importance is that they're willing to address them for us, uh, whereas they had not been for a couple of decades. Opponents say the bill is unconstitutional and it tries to scare teachers out of teaching evolution, period. This bill is being promoted by radical religious right groups who are disturbed and angry that creationism is not allowed to be taught in science classes in public schools. Hedy Weinberg of the American Civil Liberties Union in Nashville claims the bill is an attempt to bring biblical creationism into the classroom. This violates the American Constitution, which prohibits government from advancing any religious belief. For Weinberg, the bill is also part of a nationwide religious revival, which equates evolution with the moral decline of America's youth. There is poverty, there is crime, there is a alienation that's occurring in this country and in this state, and some people say the best way to handle that is to bring religion back into schools, to make sure every teacher has a Bible on his or her desk in order to ensure some calmness and some ability to take young people and have them become participating members of society. If I thought for a moment that that would work, I, I might have to rethink my position. However, that really does not directly deal with the serious social problems we face, poverty, crime, unemployment. Until we deal with those problems, we're always going to have scapegoated issues of should, science be, should evolution be taught in the science class. Um, and the radical religious right finds that they are able to manipulate the fears of people and talk about if we had religion back in school, we would be a better society. What we're seeing today, we saw it 71 years ago when the Tennessee legislature passed a law prohibiting the teaching of evolution. So the language of this bill is a little bit different. It's more involved in semantics and they talk about evolution, teaching it as theory, not fact. But in fact, the purpose is the same and that's to remove the teaching of evolution from the classroom. Weinberg will now try to convince senators to vote against the anti-evolution bill. She sounds out the politicians she hopes are sympathetic to the cause. It could be the climate, the political climate that we've got today that the Christian right has created has allowed for all of these people to think this is the way I can be, appear popular and get votes and assure my re-election or my election. And that's the thing you've got to look at. It's not necessarily their activity, but the climate that they've bred that has been, you know, from, from which that miasma has created this uh, stew that we're in. Depending on how this legislation ended up, the fact that, that textbooks which are now being written for science, because the theory of evolution is a basis for all modern biology, and if you in any way put a damper on the ability to teach evolution in biology, we're going to have to rewrite textbooks in Tennessee. And you're not letting people think. Right. They, they're supposed to think and learn by by deductive reasoning and logic and not just by blind faith. You don't teach facts, you teach a way of thinking. In Memphis, there are a lot of people who think Elvis is still alive. <laughs> and you wonder, will we start to have to teach both the school that Elvis is alive and the school that Elvis is dead? And this could be, this could be the next step, who knows? Well, it's got all kinds of ramifications. It's, it's just intellectually dishonest. Thank you. 
years long ago. But in teaching his belief, Mr. Scopes found only grief, for they would not let their old religion go. You may find a new belief, it will only bring you grief, for a house that's built on sand is sure to fall. Dayton in Tennessee is America's first and most famous battleground in the conflict between religion and science. Seventy years ago, John Scopes, a teacher at the local high school, was sent to trial for violating the Butler Act of 1925. This made it an offense in Tennessee to teach evolution. Amidst unprecedented media fanfare, two legal giants, Clarence Darrow and William Jennings Bryan, battled over the right to teach a scientific theory which was seen to challenge the divine creation. Scopes was found guilty and fined a hundred dollars. The Butler Act was not repealed until 1967 and the monkey trial, as it came to be known, left a deep divide between science and religion which remains evident today. Dayton is still a creationist town, and its people form the rock on which the current anti-evolution bill is founded. This guy asked me from New York, he said, uh, what part of the south are you from? I said, Chattanooga. Not really Chattanooga, a little old town above uh, Chattanooga, they called Dayton. He said, you mean monkey town? <laughs> he put us on the map, you know? <laughs> I personally, and the majority, of the people, I'd say the people of a whole, as a whole in this county has no objection to evolution being taught as a theory, but we do all object to, be, to it being taught as a fact. Uh, this has been, a, uh, has always been a community that believed in uh, Genesis creation, and they always will. I think most of us think of evolution in more of a scientific atmosphere than we do in a religious or, or a creative atmosphere. And we think of evolution maybe in animals, in, in, in the, the sea, creatures, that type thing. But not man. Not man. Just I believe in evolution, though, because look at Clyde. He's evolved into a real nice guy, even though it took 86 years. <laughs> I like to think that my granddaddy walked on the face of the earth rather than hanging by his tail out of the tree. Modern creationism does not stand on faith alone. It has built its own science to prove the biblical account in Genesis. One school of creation science is based on the story of Noah and the Flood, searching for evidence that all of humankind and present-day creatures of the land and air are descended from those which came off the ark. Dr. Kurt Wise is a highly qualified scientist. He's also a creationist. Educated at Harvard University, he now teaches creation science in Dayton at a small biblical college named after the man who prosecuted John Scopes. Wise has sacrificed a career in mainstream science for his creationist views. The Bible tells us that the land creatures and the air creatures survived the flood on Noah's Ark, that there were representatives of each kind of animal, each type of animal on the ark. They got off the ark and then those representatives spread across the surface of the earth to repopulate or refill the earth after the flood. In creationism, that biblical type, that group of organisms, the biblical kind, doesn't equate to a species. It doesn't correspond to a species. It corresponds to something larger than a species. 
something we're currently studying. We suspect at this point that it corresponds to something about the level of a family. If that's the case, there were only several hundred organisms on the ark that got off the ark to repopulate the world. If there was ever such an event, it should have left evidence all about of it having happened. For example, I'm doing research out in the Death Valley region right now. And uh, there, we're mapping a region where there are, there's a, a sedimentary rock layer that's 3,000 feet thick. And in that rock, there are other rocks. And this is traditionally interpreted to be a glacial deposit. Dropped there, a glacier picked off a bunch of rocks and dropped them in there uh, and, and created this deposit. The problem is, there are plenty of evidences in that particular area that this wasn't a glacial environment. This is uh, evidence of an underwater landslide. See, we would say that that was actually the initial moments or the initial events of Noah's flood, that it was a, a global phenomenon. It affected sediment across all of North America. Then when we find sediments there that we can trace across the United States to even rocks here, we have evidence of, of sediments across an entire continent. Again, the sort of thing we would expect in a global flood. Dayton's creationist inheritance spans the generations. The science teacher at the local high school shares the creationist views of his students. The law as it stands requires Joe Wilkie to teach evolution only, but it's a struggle. The young people of Dayton hold tightly to their belief in the Bible. Unable to deny the word of God to his students or himself, Joe Wilkie walks a thin line between science and religion. Creationists like to be lumpers. They like to put a lot of organisms together in a group. Evolutionists like to be splitters. They like to set off a whole bunch of different organisms. An evolutionist says that there's natural reproductive boundaries out there that prohibit dogs, wolves, coyotes, foxes from reproducing. I believe that I give the evolutionary view equal time, and I believe I give it a fair shake. I believe I give the creation view a fair shake. Wait a minute, you don't even think it's a theory? Well, I mean, it's not really, I mean, basically it's not been proven. I mean, we had to be put here, some, some supernatural thing. I mean, we couldn't have evolved from such a simple, organism into what we are now. I mean, there's no way, the way that they think that it all started. I don't think God has to have evolution to make a world. I don't think a supernatural being has to use a natural process. I know a lot of people that believe he did use a natural process, but I don't personally believe that a supernatural, all-powerful, omnipotent being has to use a natural process to create. All right, you got your supernatural, which would be God, and he actually, like, he said that he put us here and then put all the animals and plants and stuff to make us survive. How could I say to a student, your ideas are trash, keep them out of this room, I don't want to hear them. We don't want to discuss that. Don't you know you're being one of those hick hillbillies believing all that religious stuff? I mean, how could I say that to a student and look at that student in the eye the next day and say, I respect you as a person? I mean, I couldn't do it. We didn't like evolve from anything. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, how can like an African-American person evolve from a white person? We're different skin. This is WKDF, Nashville. Tennessee is a step closer to repeating the so-called monkey trial of 1925, where a public school teacher was convicted of teaching evolution. The American Civil Liberties Union is promising a court battle if legislature passes a plan to force schools to teach evolution as a theory. State Senator Tommy Burke of Cookville says the bill is not about religion, but is sponsoring the bill barring the teaching of evolution as fact because it isn't. He claims evolution is just a theory and should be taught as such. 
I'm Mike Creel reporting from Nashville. The bill is attracting attention outside of Tennessee. The National Center for Science Education, based in California, monitors the activities of creationists around the country. Their director, Eugenie Scott, has come to Tennessee to advise teachers who fear the bill threatens their jobs. I talk to teachers all over the country, and by and large, teachers are nice people. They got into education because they like kids or they want to make a difference, and, and they don't really like arguing with people. If you want to argue, you go into law. But teachers will avoid controversial subjects. Whenever evolution is made a controversial subject, a lot of teachers just are not going to feel comfortable teaching it. And they do. I mean, and teachers tell me that sometimes their principals and superintendents, the local administrators, tell them just to skip evolution. It's an election year. We don't want to have any trouble. You're not alone, okay? <laughs> the creation-evolution issue is not something that's just relegated to Tennessee or to the southeast or the south or what people think of as the, quote, Bible Belt. I mean, if anything, the Bible Belt runs from, from Maine to San Diego. The Bible Belt is all over this country. But um, have any of you had experiences with uh, complaints about evolution from parents or students? Or when, when I said, we're going to do this, one of the students raised her hand and said, we can't talk about this. And I said, we can talk about whatever we want, <laughs> and we're going to. Yeah. And then I got kind of curious, and I said, how many of you have studied this in biology? One, that, no one. No, no one. one. And yeah. they even said the teacher won't talk about it. A few times uh, I have had uh, parental concerns come to me. Um, one, once a few years ago, a young, young lady brought me a letter from her, her mother that said, Whenever you talk about evolution, I don't want my daughter in the classroom. Wouldn't you feel silly if you were an astronomy teacher and you were going to talk about the solar system and you'd start off your class saying, well, we're going to talk about how the Earth goes around the sun, but you don't have to believe it if you don't want to. I mean, you'd feel really silly doing that, but we're stuck doing this with evolution. The major objection that people have, uh, that religious conservatives have with evolution, is that evolution allows you to explain uh, all the diversity of plants and animals and the presence of the planet Earth and the presence of the galaxy and the whole universe. It allows you to explain all this using natural processes. You don't require the supernatural. You don't have to have God. You can explain it all with material cause. And this is very upsetting to many conservative religious people because it seems that if you don't have to have God, then maybe there is no God. And without God, they feel extremely vulnerable. The teaching of evolution says that the world happens by chance. There's no creator, and substantially, there is no life after death. That affects the behavior of people. If there, is, if there is no life after death, there is no hope. If there is no life after death, there is no fear. And that, that affects the behavior of children. Here in the United States, we've seen uh, escalations of teen violence that's been reported in all the national media uh, lately. Doubling of, of uh, juvenile committed murders in the last 10 years. We cannot stay on that course another generation without our society falling apart. We can't, we can't condone children killing children and killing adults. We must do something about that. I'm not a juvenile delinquent. No, no. Nashville High School student Amanda Osteen has decided to oppose the Crusaders who claim her generation's souls are at risk from evolution. She's organizing a petition in her school to protest against the bill. I wanted our voices to be heard as students. And even though I feel very strongly one way, I still just wanted to get out there and hear what people thought about it. And even the people that believed in creation said, 
I think we should be taught evolution too, you know? That's, it's, it's part of science, it's part of our education. We would be the biggest idiots from Tennessee going to go get another job somewhere and somebody says evolution, we say, what's that? You know, we can't put ourselves in the position to be ignorant. Thank you. People think that their religion is their life and everyone else should live like that too. And I guess just going to church on Sunday isn't quite enough. They want in the classroom every day too. It's just that a lot of people here are Christian and so they think that those Christian ideals should be brought into schools because that's what they believe. And I guess that a lot of people here are very close-minded and don't realize that that's not their place and that it is a public school and there's a time and a place for all those things. And people don't need to be deprived of anything. People need to have the freedom to learn what they want to learn and you know the government is not allowed to aid any kind of religion and I just don't think that they should. Now man come from monkeys, some folks say, but the good book don't quite tell it that way. Now if you believe that monkey tale like some people do, then I'd rather be the monkey brother than you and that's all. And that's all. You better change your way of living for the good Lord say that's all. Eminent biologist Dr. Will Provine has returned to Tennessee to visit the house in which he was born and raised. His contribution to the creation debate will be a lecture at Amanda Osteen's school. Provine says he severed his religious roots as he grew to understand science. He's evangelical about his atheism and embraces the most radical implications of evolution. <laughs> I represent what creationists fear most about teaching evolutionism in the school. They fear that more people will become as I am. So in one sense, the creationists and I are very much together. We both believe in a terrible conflict between religion and science. In another sense, I'm at the opposite pole from creationists because I believe all of the implications of evolution that they do. They see them as terrible, I see them as relatively benign. I am an atheist evolutionist. I'm a total atheist. And I believe that the implications of evolution are very severe. And I believe that in most high school textbooks, the implications of evolution are rather hidden. So what I'd like to find out from you, in a state where there's great controversy about evolution, what you feel is at stake here. What is really at stake? Why are people so exercised about evolution? That's how we came to be. That's how all of life started. And so that's one of the most important things that you can learn in a science classroom, because everything branches off of that. Whether it takes one week or one month to learn it, everything comes from it. The Darwinian notion of evolution is dangerous. It is dangerous because it undermines cultural assumptions that go back into unrecorded history. We have always believed as human beings that we are so special that we can't even truly die. We somehow go over into another life. But evolution tells us that no one lives after he or she is dead. There is no life after death. If you accept the kind of evolution that's presented in your textbooks, that is, without any trace of design or purpose in it, if you accept that view of evolution, then tell me what you think are is the baggage that comes along with believing in evolution. I guess you couldn't believe in creation if you had to believe in it. That's right. You could not believe in creation. No. What about life after death? I think evolution teaches us virtually nothing about human morality. We have a lot of biologists who have tried to argue that an understanding of the evolutionary process, particularly of adaptation in social animals, will help us to understand fundamental aspects of human morality. 
I think this is hopeless and it's false. We humans are just on our own. We're put here by a process that doesn't care about us, and we have to figure out for ourselves how to behave with each other. Why do you, how do you have morals, or what keeps you, I mean, you seem like a nice guy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, what keeps you from, what the keeps answer, you from? The answer is that my parents brought me up reasonably well. Sometimes they felt they didn't bring me up all that well. And I saw that it was wonderful to do things for other people because it gave me a good feeling inside. That's how my parents brought me up. So all we've got to do to have a good society is to bring up kids to enjoy, to get a good selfish pleasure from being kindly and social with other human beings. Richard Dawkins was born on March 26, 1941, of British parents in Kenya. He read zoology at Oxford University, and after two years as an assistant professor at the University of California at Berkeley, he returned to Oxford, where he is now Charles Simani Professor of the Public Understanding of Science and Fellow of New College. I would now ask that you please join me in welcoming and in wishing a happy birthday to Dr. Richard Dawkins. On the eve of the Senate's vote on the anti-evolution bill, Dr. Richard Dawkins is invited to the University of Tennessee. He takes this opportunity to fire across the bows of his traditional foe. Uh, it's a slight feeling of deja vu back to, what was it, 1925? Um, so I thought I would um, depart a bit from my prepared text and just indulge in a little harmless creationist bashing, if that's all right. <laughs> The Hindus believe that the world is created by churning a cosmic butter churn. Um, there's a tribe of West Africans who believe that the world is created from the excrement of ants. Um, the Jews wrote down their creation myth, um, I think about six or 700 BC, while they were in captivity in Babylon, and they simply took over the local creation myth, which was the Babylonian one, modified it a bit. Um, by some strange historic accident, this particular one of the origin myths, the one that originated from Babylon and was filtered through the Jews, has got into the Christian Bible, and there are people who are brought up to believe that every word in the Christian Bible is true. If they actually thought back to the historical origins of the story in the Christian Bible and realized that it had absolutely no more status than hundreds, thousands of other creation myths all around the world, then they might get it into perspective. As the philosopher Michael Ruse has said, you may think incredibly daft things as part of your religion, but that is your business. But it ceases to be only your business when you impose your views on your unfortunate children to the extent sometimes of removing them from school when evolution is being taught. I think this is a kind of mental child abuse, and children need to be protected from mental abuse just as they need to be protected from physical abuse. I don't mean that parents should not be allowed to influence their children. Of course, you couldn't stop them, and why should we? I mean that children should be allowed to make up their own minds and should be exposed to all sides of the argument. What I care about is what is true. What is, truth, what is true about the world, what's true about the universe. Um, if it were proved that evolution had uh, very adverse effects on society, say, because they, if it destroys people's religion, and if that makes them then go out and smash shop windows and, and, and rob old ladies and things, which it doesn't, by the way, but it, even if it did, that still wouldn't in any way affect its truth value. We've got to take truth about the world, truth about the universe, separately from whatever consequences, moral or political, they may have. It might not be worth bothering about creationists if they were some kind of pathetic, beleaguered minority, but they're not. Uh, a survey of uh, American college students showed 62% believe Adam and Eve were created by God, 65% believe in Noah's flood, 41% believe that dinosaurs and humans were contemporary, 24% believe that creation occurred in six 24-hour days. Uh, that was students, perhaps even more worrying, similar figures are true of editors 
of newspapers. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul. Legislation that would prohibit the teaching of evolution as fact in public schools stalled in the Senate and was taken off notice in the House of Representatives. Senators voted 19 to 13 to send the controversial bill back to the Education Committee as several amendments were offered for debate. Before coming to a final vote, the Tennessee Senate hesitate. They send the anti-evolution bill back to the Education Committee. A wonderful thing in leading the nation here, rather than looking kind of silly. Mm -hmm. Do you want to sit here by Tanuka? I can sit down. Or... Um, Tell me what you got. Okay, I'm from Hillsborough High School, and we've put together this petition against the anti-evolution bill. And um, these are all students from different ages and different religions and different everything that have signed this petition. Senator Tommy Burks, a pig farmer from East Tennessee, is the author of the bill. Bewildered by the barrage of media coverage over the issue, he takes the stand. You're recognized on Senate Bill 3229. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, all we're saying is the curriculum is there, just teach it as a theory and not as a fact. And uh, I think that it sets a stage and a policy from the uh, state of Tennessee that uh, we think that uh, courses ought to be taught with truth in mind, and we do the same thing with the, the DARE drug program when we send a policeman into the classroom to teach about the hazard of drugs and to tell the truth about it. That's what I'm after, and that's for a teacher to go in a classroom, not be overzealous in their interpretation of evolution, and that they would teach it as a theory. Senator Dixon, do you wish to be recognized? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. One, uh, do you believe in Santa Claus? Do I what? <laughs> well, I want to know if you believed in Santa Claus. I don't know, my grandkids might be listening and I don't tell you that answer. All of us know that, that our school systems teach our younger children that there's a Santa Claus and that there's an Easter Bunny. And we could bring a bill to challenge that as well. I think this bill, if it passes, and it probably will, will do great harm to the image of the state of Tennessee. We put fear in the hearts of those who want to speak what's on their mind. And so my hope is that, that the state of Tennessee will be better off without this bill. And, and I'm going to vote no, because uh, I think some of us have got to begin to stand up and bring some balance back to Tennessee. Thank you. The bill passes in committee. 
the full Senate must now take a final vote. Politicians are mindful that supporters of the bill have a bigger goal than the humbling of science. I think it's not a reaction to science. It's a reaction to untruth, whether that untruth be in science or government or education. We want the truth told. Evolution is not the truth. I think now people are realizing we, we cannot shirk those, those traditional Christian values that shaped our lives, shaped our society, uh, and, and continue to hold it together. Um, the chaos will be the result if we don't return to the moral foundations of, of, of this nation. And I think what we're seeing politically uh, is, is simply a reverberation of, of that spiritual renewal that's sweeping America right now, and I think we'll see more changes in the future. I'm not sure that I know exactly what the effect is of the Christian political activism in our country. But I can tell you, with respect to the General Assembly itself, we do have to be cognizant of the fact that those people are there. And they are watching what we do, and they vote. They vote in numbers, and they are particularly conscientious about voting. So the concern is, in the minds of the legislators, that I want to be careful that if I vote against this bill, it's not perceived as I've somehow voted against God. I mean, that's still not a very popular notion. Uh, we allow freedom of ideas, but nobody wants to really be counted as saying, I'm against God. We come here this morning, Lord, just to praise you. Bless our Father the singing, anointed our Father with our Holy Spirit. Has enabled him to speak While politicians choose between what the electorate want and what the electorate need, at the center of the debate, there's a deceptively simple question. Is this all a matter of faith? Or is it a matter of fact? To believe and obey. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Evolution is another religious world view. You're not going to be able to prove that evolution happened. There was no one there. You're not going to be able to prove that creation happened. There was no one there. As a matter of fact, the Bible specifically says that it's by faith that we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By the, word of God. Uh, the, the evidence of creation, and it's all around us. The Bible specifically says that it's so blatant that we have to shut our eyes and we have to shut our ears or else if we looked and we heard, we would be converted. I did not come to my faith in creation based upon evidence. I came to it because of my belief in scripture and that will always be my position. So the only thing evidence changes for anyone is their science their theories, their ideas about how things are made. It never shakes their faith. And that goes for a naturalist as much as it does for a theist. If I show evidence galore for creation, it will not shake the faith of a naturalist. When you ask me whether my uh, belief in evolution is effectively a belief system, um, in a way, any scientific belief is. But it's a travesty to go from that, as many people do, to say, well, then there's nothing to choose between the scientific belief and, say, the biblical belief. It all fundamentally comes down to faith. Well, it does not all fundamentally come down to faith, because on one side there's evidence, and on the other side there's no evidence. How many of you would like to have life after death? I would. I'd like to have life after death. But, but, you can't have it if you believe in naturalistic evolution. I have an astrocytoma. It will kill me probably in a relatively few years. Evolution has helped me immensely to adjust with having this tumor that will kill me. Because I can look at myself as being a machine on the one hand, and on the other hand, as being this human that's got this brain tumor. And as I look at my life, it's been, over my past, deeply satisfying with whatever troubles that there have been in it. And I can look to the future with optimism and with warmth. And it, it doesn't hurt me at all in that sense. Everybody's going to die. And so, given that everybody's going to die, how can you best adjust to living?
So my life's no different in that sense than somebody who's pretty sure they're going to live another 40 or 50 years. They're going to have to adjust. They're going to have to decide how you live your life as a finite being. And accepting that you're a finite being, I think, really helps your humanness. Because we're all humans, we're all going to die, and it's wonderful to really come to terms with that. So I don't feel bad about having to die. Everybody will. I wouldn't mind having a few more years. The anti-evolution bill failed to become law by just three votes. Science is safe for the time being. But fundamentalist religions are on the move across the globe, confident that they alone know what is right and what is wrong. Science, too, is on the move, secure in the knowledge that it has resolved where we come from and eager to take us to where we go next. This will be the new challenge for religion. Can it provide the moral framework to control the apparently irresistible rise of science?